What's up, One Young Wild? How y'all doing? Yeah. <laughs> I hope you're having a great time. It's certainly good to be back on the One Young Wild stage. Today is Peace Day. One Young World 2017 is all about peace. We are extremely excited to come to the country that made it their mission to make peace. Youth from all over the world coming together to combat hate, violence, and extremism. Sadly, this year, unlike any other, has been defined by violent terrorist attacks. Attack after attack after attack. South Asia, Europe, Africa, East Asia, anywhere you go, you will see violent extremism. Since when did tragedy become the norm? Why do we have to accept this as an inconvenient truth? I refuse to support violent extremism. But it's not all bad, guys. So let's have a look at what we have been doing over the last year. Please play the video. Last year, 10 leaders from across the world came together to form Extremely Together, a movement of the youth, for the youth, and by the youth. Since launching, we've delivered you the CVE Toolkit, the first ever guide to tell you how to counter violent extremism within your own local communities. We've engaged 2.5 million young people across the globe. We've also had over 100,000 Facebook likes and 10,000 fans. Violent extremism knows no boundaries. We have been working tirelessly. We've been going in and out of schools, rehabilitating people who have been victims of violent extremism and reconciling communities that have been torn apart by extremist organizations. We need your help to do that. We need 1,300 young people in this room to come together and be extremely together. launching the initiative Extremely Together at One Young World last year in Ottawa, we reached 2.5 million people. 2.5 million people! Yeah! To build safer environments around the world. And that is both offline and online engagements. What this initiative is really about is looking at every different sector in the world and using our different disciplines, our backgrounds, our careers to create safer environments. I'm from Somalia. I work in the rehabilitation, reintegration, of young people that are part of armed groups. And I just want to say, being here in Colombia right now is incredibly inspiring for me. My country's been in war for 26 years. This country has been in war for 50 years. I don't, want to, I don't want my country to get to war for 50 years. So being here, seeing the leadership of young people, how you're approaching peace is incredibly inspiring, but also very much linked to what we're doing with Extremely Together. In our collective, some of our colleagues who couldn't be here today, like Hassan is working on interfaith dialogue. We have libraries for peace. We have targeted interventions happening by Mimoon. They couldn't be with us today, but what we have here on stage is a serial entrepreneur countering violent extremism in that right. We have a policy expert. We have a storyteller. We have a young man that's building entire civil society communities in Pakistan. And we have a gender activist. And the challenge that we have for all of you today is to think about what you're doing. Are you an artist? Are you a politician? Are you a business person? Whatever sector you're in, you can counter violent extremism. And the guide that we develop teaches you how. Guys, we need not to underestimate the efforts being done by extremists to recruit other youth. We need to be much more creative and innovative in creating the solutions and op opposing these guys. And not only that, but also in giving alternatives for youth who are at risk. In 2012, I was at a Syrian uh, refugees camp, and I noticed that a guy was trying to escape because the camp is not allowed for you to, to, to escape out, out of the camp. He was trying to escape, and I tried to call him. When he noticed that I'm wearing a charity aid t-shirt, he looked at me and he told me, what do you want? 
are you going to give me a piece of rice that's not going to be enough for my 23 family members who is living at the same tent? After that, we had a chat. He told me that he lost his brother. He lost a sister. His entire home was destroyed, and he was forced to move to this miserable place. And after that, some terrorists came to him, and they tried to convince him to, convince him to join jihadists because he is hopeless and he has nothing to do now. I told him, wait a moment. As a social entrepreneur, what if, you, what if I can uh, give you uh, a job opportunity in which you can build your, your future with, with? He agreed, and we started. After a year, I, was, I asked him, hey, Khaled, don't you want to join jihadists again? He said, I have a stable life. My, my family is living in a good place, and my nais are going to school now. Then we have hope. Why to go back? So look at a small job opportunity who saved a life. And not only maybe this guy's life, but the other lives that he was going to take or to kill or being died because of him. So do not underestimate any small job opportunity you can create. So guys, as an activist working in my home country, Pakistan, I've realized one thing, that people have genuine grievances, and we need to address those grievances if we have to counter extremism. I've realized that we need to have empathy and compassion, even when we are dealing with extremists, because that is the only trait that differentiates us from extremists. Uh, now come back to Pakistan, come to the hood. We have lost 60,000 people to terrorism in the last eight years. I've lost my colleagues fighting extremism. I've lost my cousins and family members to targeted assassinations. But it's not all gloomy. The blood-soaked streets of Pakistan tell a story of tragedy, but also of hope, of courage, because people like Malala, who have st stood up to extremism and showed amazing resilience. Um, dealing with terror terrorist organizations is, is a very difficult task because these organizations operate within the civil society sphere, and they create de facto governments and they offer solutions and an alternate vision. We need to counter that alternate vision. Even right now, as I speak, uh, non-state uh, extremist groups control more land and more resources ever th than, than the last 100 years. And that is why it is very important that we all come together and, and fight extremism. Because to me, uh, the fight against extremism is the fight for the soul and the heart of this world. So whether you are a professional, you are an artist, you are an academic, you are a student, or you are a one young world delegate, we all can come together, form movements, and counter the extremist messaging. You know, the first for those of you who have witnessed violence, who have who lived in a conflict-prone area, the first response that we have to violence is that we try to be together. We hold our mother, we hold our children, our lovers, and etc. So that is exactly what extremely together is in the face of patriarchy, organized extremism, white supremacy, Islamist extremism, we are all extremely together. Thank you. So actually you just ruined what I was going to say because I'm trying to be grumpy here. <laughs> We all know that Bob Geldof is the grumpy uncle of One Young World. <laughs> and I'm the grumpy aunt of Extremely Together. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yes, I am. Who, who will always remind you of the crappy world we inherited as young people? I'm talking about the world outside of these walls. I'm talking about the world where there is millions of people who can't distinguish between the sound of a thunder strike and that of an airstrike. I'm talking about a world where rain and, season are rain and snow are limited to their seasons, while bombs and ammunition falls down year around. I'm talking about a world where there is millions of young refugees. When, start, when they start their peaceful journey, it often starts at the shore of the Mediterranean Sea, and it ends even before reaching the other side. I'm talking about a world that is becoming more and more violent. I'm talking about my world as a Libyan, the world of many people who are sitting in this room. And I'm here to tell you that if we don't act, if we don't change it, then it's going to be the world of each one of us here. 
The war I lived in Libya made me realize one important thing, that people are not born violent, people born into violence. People are not born poor, people born into poverty. That young people are not idle, but we are pioneering and a creative group who has the ability and the capacity to build peace and end violent extremism. <laughs> Last year, in this exact same stage, One Young World, I begged everyone to change something that we inherited as well, something that's called moment of silence. Because it started as a moment of silence, but then it continues. It's silence after every disaster happens. So please, I'm going to beg you again. Let's change that today. And instead of being silenced, please, all of us, stand up together. And make let's some make noise. this our Let's stand our up and stand make, some make some noise. Make some noise. Make some noise. <laughs> yes. that, that's exactly right, One Young World. We're making noise and we're not going to stop until we are heard. So making noise is critical to tackling violent extremism. We need conversations. This conversation is our invitation for all of you to join us in our work to challenge extremism everywhere. You see, extremism is what occurs when communication breaks down when we start talking about each other rather than talking to each other and speaking to each other and listening to each other. Last year, I stood on this stage and I told you the story of how I, how I survived a terrorist attack, how a man pointed his gun at my head and fired. He killed 69 of my friends that day, and I'm still haunted by their ghosts, their potential. These were young lives robbed of the opportunity to thrive. He did this not because uh, necessarily he was born evil or born bad, as Hydra pointed out, but because he was afraid of us, because he was afraid of me and my friends. He, like every terrorist, feared for his existence. Not because he was under any real threat necessarily, but because people over time had convinced him he was. If only someone else had engaged with him earlier, if someone had shown him that they cared about him, that they listened to him, that they saw him as a human being, things might have turned out very differently. Over the last few years, <laughs> all right, thank you guys. Over the last few years, I've stood on hundreds of stages around the world. I've stood in front of thousands of youth to engage and empower as many people as possible to take part in our struggle. And I invite you all to join us today. Through this work, I've met with former extremists, people who know better than anyone the paths into extremism, but also back out of them. Rehabilitation is possible, guys. We can make people who are extremists stop being extremists. I've also worked with families and parents who have lost their children to terrorist organizations. And I'm still haunted by more ghosts than ever right now, by victims of extremism. There are no winners when it comes to violent extremism. Uh, we cannot kill ideology through violence. We cannot bomb for peace without pushing some people further into radical radicalization. Therefore, we need to use a different strategy. We need to use communication. We need to speak to each other, and we need to see each other as human beings, to hear one another and to listen to one another, truly listen with our hearts. This is our responsibility and something we can all do. So, one young girl, I'm going to ask you a really personal question and humor me. How do I look? Yeah, pretty fat. <laughs> I mean, how does my T-shirt look, guys? I'm sending a direct message. I'm having a conversation, not just with you, not just with anyone on the, uh, who's focusing in live on the other end of the camera, but to every extremist who's watching and realizing that we are growing as a movement. There's something that I would like to say, and that's I develop critical thinking by empowering the global youth of the world. That's how I choose to counter violent extremism. That's the message I want to send. Extremists bomb us to send a direct message. 
They terrorize us to change our worldview, and they use violence and threats to demand our obedience. We need to stand up against them, and we need to actively disobey. We, the millennials, need to rebel against violence, against hate, and we need to radicalize peace. On this day of international peace, I'm asking you all to wage peace on the behalf of Extremely Together. Now, I'm not the only one looking great on this stage. Some of you have our T-shirts. Stand up if you've got a T-shirt. Let's have a look at you. Yeah, only the green T-shirts. Woo! <laughs> you guys are looking amazing. And I think there are two great hot people back here with T-shirts on and a direct message. So, David, Kate, can I ask you, what are you going to do to support Extremely Together? So, is my mic on? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, it says I, but it's actually we. So, um, we will reinvent the future by giving the Extremely Together ambassadors a global platform every year at One Young World and supporting them in everything they do until extreme terrorism is extinct. Woo! Woo! <laughs> um, I want to facilitate dialogue and what I particularly precisely want to do is I was terribly impressed with the work that Fatima and Bjorn did. I saw them doing earlier this year with Hayden. Where are you, Hayden? Hey, Hayden. Hey, hey Hayden. 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 Hey, Hayden. <laughs> Where they went into a school and spent a, a long afternoon teaching or explaining to the young teenagers in that school about terrorism and learning about violent extremism in the most innovative way. And I know that the guys have been looking for funding, and we've put together a program to try to get to 43,000 young people across the UK in a school year. However, it's money that we don't have. So all I can do is say here, the only money that we asked for was enough for the guys to get a couple of train and bus tickets and a little bit of cover for the fact that they lost work that day, the sums of money, tiny sums of money. So I'll tell you what I'll do, Hayden. I personally, not One Young World, I'll pay for the next school trip myself, okay? <laughs> but I do ask everybody else, the partners and everybody, I think a one-day cost is something like, I don't know, it has, it's about 600 pounds or something, Hayden. It's next to nothing. And that's what we're trying to do because I think the dialogue isn't there. I think that in the UK where there's a lot of, um, you know about the violent extremism in the UK, I think the counter-narrative is not there. I understand the appeal to a young 16-year-old boy of being part of that evil movement. I do, but I don't see a counter-narrative that shows that the values all of us hold dear is, is a much cooler thing. And I, f I feel passionate about the work of these people. It's so innovative, it's so courageous, so brave and so necessary, and I will do everything I can to be part of this. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very Kate. much, Kate. Thank you, Mother Kate, and thank you, David, and thank you to everyone who's taken a T-shirt. Now, can I get a drum roll, because I'm about to announce something? We're about to announce the next steps of Extremely Together, guys. We need a drum roll. <laughs> there we go. Ah, so, that's a drum roll. <laughs> thanks for the drum roll, guys. So these t-shirts are just the start of our second phase of Extremely Together. We've got a mission to reach 1.8 billion young people. We've reached 2.5 billion, but we need you as a collective to help us reach those 1.8 billion people. So are there any people from Morocco here? Can you stand up? Woo! Morocco! Morocco, Woo! yay! <laughs> are there any people from France here? <laughs> Wait, there's a lot of French people. <laughs> So the next steps of Extreme Together is, as Fatima said, not just about these t-shirts, but they're about taking concrete action. And as Kate said, what we've already done is going around to schools and speaking to young people to change minds, to challenge people, to have difficult conversations, to have dialogue. And we are planning on bringing that as a pilot project to the two countries, uh, Morocco and France. But we're not only limiting ourselves to, the, to that. As Fatima said, we are trying to reach 1.8 million billion, billion. Uh, young yeah, people billion. across the entire world. And that means that we need your help to reach everyone in every country across the world. So I said it last year, and I'm going to say it again. 1,300 delegates, 1,300 actions, 
1,300 ways to be extremely together. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's cool,